Hey guys, so before we get to the show, I just kind of wanted to explain the reason for the delay. We were uh, initially set to record on Sunday. I was prepping for the episode when news came out of the horrific tragedy that took the lives of Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven other innocent people. You know, I'm, I'm from Los Angeles. I grew up out here, and you can't imagine the impact that Kobe had on this community. I was brought up on the Lakers. Uh, my parents, we watched pretty much every Laker game. Entire family are Laker fans. Kobe was, was basically a part of my household for the last 25 years. And the fact that he was just suddenly gone, and not only him, his daughter, Gianna, seven other wonderful people, it was just hard to fathom. And and, and it just, under the circumstances, it, it felt inappropriate to engage in our usual lighthearted banner that we do on the show. You know, it's just, it's terrible that events like these happen, but it's just, it's a reminder to appreciate every day, appreciate every second. Don't, don't let a minute go to waste. Be the people you care about and just embrace life. Embrace the day. And, and the way we do that here on another miserable podcast is we talk about horror movies. And so that's what we're going to do today. We have a fun episode lined up for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we think you're going to enjoy it and we really appreciate you being here. Okay, guys, welcome to another miserable podcast. You know, the good thing about delaying an episode a few weeks is that we have a shit ton to talk about today, fellas. Oh <laughs> yeah. <my God. laughs> you know, another good thing about delaying it is that I'm able to actually speak uh, since I I had the flu for a week. So. Yeah, so Casey would not have been uh, on the episode if we recorded when we were initially going to because he was <laughs> sick. Right. Did you not I get got- your flu shots? I did. It did nothing. I'm just <laughs> glad you, I, I was afraid you had the coronavirus, man, and I, at least, or you, you don't. Um, yeah, I mean this. This flu took me out for a good week, though, which sucks pretty bad, and it was definitely nasty as fuck. So I can only imagine how nasty the coronavirus is. But yeah, uh, I'm a school teacher, so I have to get my flu shots, and uh, this was a strain that. The shot doesn't help with good fucking times. Yeah. So if you're just tuning in for the first time ever, guys, one, thank you. We really appreciate that. Hi. We are another miserable podcast. We are a horror podcast. We explore the intersection of horror and pop culture. So we review current movies and then we do retrospectives. Uh, my name is Zach and joining me are my two co-hosts. One, first, the most British guy I know, Chris Pistol. <laughs> The most British American you've ever met in your yes, life. Yes, he is very American. I'm drinking tea as, I, as we speak. <laughs> he watches more uh, British uh, media than uh, anyone I know. and uh, I have a monocle surgically placed on my eye. He is also a very classy man and a very nice guy. Uh, one of my best I wear friends. ties. <laughs> I wear ties sometimes. <laughs> Not while he's recording, but he wears ties. Just when I sleep. And then the man that needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. The one and only Professor Casey. Hi. Hey, what's up, people? Professor? It's good, it's good to talk to you, gentlemen. Uh, it's, good to be, it's good to be not dying of the flu and uh, able to get out of bed and speak to someone. Good times. Yes. Not um, dying is the, the way I prefer to live, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good it's way up to, there. It's a good way to live. <laughs> Um, you know, we do have some cool news, guys. I don't know if you know this, but since the last time we recorded, we have a YouTube channel. What? What? Yes. So another miserable podcast has a YouTube channel. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have like a custom URL yet because YouTube is get silly and you need they're, like, they're, they're stingy yeah. with that now. You need like a hundred subscribers really? and you mm-hmm. need to have been around for 30 days. But we do have a YouTube channel. If you go to twitter.com slash mpos official which is our twitter page please follow us there if you haven't uh in the twitter bio is the link to our youtube page so you just click that and you'll be uh, taken to the youtube page or you can just search another miserable podcast on youtube either way please subscribe to us there um every future episode of the show is going to be on that youtube channel alongside all the usual platforms like apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, 
Spotify, Stitcher. We're on iHeartRadio now if you listen to that platform. So, but every future episode will be on the channel. I'm also uploading some older ones, um, some of our more favorite episodes. Um, not everything's probably going to go up there, but if you have a particular favorite you want to see, if you want to see uh, one of our Christmas episodes or something, just let me know and I will put it up there upon request. Uh, but so far, it's our Halloween special, our 1989 episode. Uh, the last episode we did, which was the best horror movies of 2019, are up there. That's that 1989 episode we recorded back in 1989. Yes. I was born. Yeah. So we've been going a while, guys. I, you know, <laughs> I didn't have much to say back then. Just we, a lot of we actually food. time traveled back to 1989 just for that episode, just to make it more authentic. So much, so much Batman stuff. So much. <laughs> and we saw them. We Everyone. saw them filming Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which made it even more meta. Oh, uh, I'm so excited for Bill and Ted face the music. <laughs> okay, guys. So we do have a lot to cover in this episode. So we should probably get to it. It is February now, but we're going to be talking about the January slate of horror movies, or as I like to refer to it, Turduary, because... Yeah, yeah, if you guys want to hear about some dog shit... Uh, well, Strap yourselves in. Horror <laughs> isn't that bad, and I do gotta say, when we do Don't Cross the Streams, I've got some fucking gems for you guys, so if you get through <laughs> us shitting on everything... I promise to give you some stuff that you actually will want to watch. Yes, yes. Uh, Don't Cross the Streams is our se- reoccurring segment where we uh, recommend streaming horror uh, titles on streaming services. So uh, we'll get to I that I thought that later. was where, I thought was that was where one person got on one side of the toilet bowl, the guy uh, got on the other side of the toilet bowl, and we crossed our peace streams. Well, yes, but we're... Uh, it's, I just it's, made it uh, very uncomfortable. Yeah. I, I just feel bad because Sid Haig can't walk in on us talking I, about How did I know you were going to talk about Sid Haig? <laughs> <sighs> oh, okay. All right, Sid. Sorry about that. Okay, so yeah, so we have four horror movies to talk about. Uh, Underwater, The Turning, or as Casey refers to it, The Turning, uh, Color Out of Space, and Gretchen and Hansel, because... That Hansel and Gretel are so hot right now, guys. That Hansel. Every time she would yell Hansel in that movie, that's exactly what I thought of. She was like, Hansel! And I like, wanted to turn to my girlfriend and be like, that Hansel is so hot right now. I was afraid she wouldn't get the reference. And uh, I want her to think I was a pedophile. So. Yeah. Um, so we did already cover one of the uh, turds of January, which is The Grudge in the last episode. Well, I covered it because I saw it. But uh, let's talk about uh, like the first movie we all saw on this list, which is Underwater, directed by William Eubank, who also directed <laughs> The Signal. Um, stars Kristen Stewart, John Gallagher Jr., uh, Casey's best friend, T.J. Miller. Oh, uh, what's up, Byron? <laughs> so um, what did you guys think about Underwater? So if, oh. um, quick, quick, uh, quick before we get into it, I'll just say um, we will talk about spoilers for some of these. We will give a spoiler warning before that. And also, um, if you look at the chapter markers, there should be like chap- spoilers, uh, like a chapter marker, so you can just skip the spoiler section. Dang, Zach, you go, you go above and beyond. Zach works hard on those chapter markers. I don't know if I, I try to please. Notice, but he does a very good job breaking everything up. So if there's any kind of spoiler, you can skip Ooh. past it because there are going to be spoilers in this underwater discussion. Big time. And I have um, on the YouTube versions of some of the videos I uploaded there, episodes I uploaded on there. I expanded on some of the uh, chapter markers, which uh, aren't on th- oh the God, man. podcast versions right now or on some of them. Cause I didn't uh, do as detailed chapter markers as I could have. I'll try and, transfer those over but anyway you do too much yes i i try guys underwater (laughs) yeah um not not a piece of shit um (laughs) (laughs) that's like something we should kind of start with it wasn't bad i didn't think it was great like if you're if you're gonna see the signal it's not the good signal that this director did though it's the other signal isn't it i was gonna say i've never heard of the signal tell what what is this? what is it well there's two signals and there's one that's awesome and then there's another one which is the one i actually think this director did uh let's see uh, he did the one with Lawrence fishburne so i actually have not seen the signal so i i've heard mixed things about that but has anyone seen the signal i've never heard i I, i've seen the first one and it was good uh the not 2014 one well anyway this is about underwater 
it's another entry in the you know long line of you know deep sea excavation mining whatever research team doing something underwater this movie would go perfect with uh my list on letterboxd of movies that are just doctor who episodes where the doctor doesn't show up Ah. this this presence is pretty much a doctor who episode where there's like a base under siege there is something out there a monster of some kind if doctor who had showed up then it would have been an alien but some kind of monster and they have to survive the situation yeah you know this film i i think eubank really loved the way the water looked in this movie because you get a lot of like murky debris particle water in this movie where you can't really see a lot but it looks cool Okay, so so quickly, the signal you want to see is the 2007 one. It's kind of a found footage-ish. It's uh, David Bruckner's the director of that one. That's the one you want to see. Um, this reminded me of Cloverfield, like a lot, like not people are saying good. that. Uh, yeah, and I got the vibe, like hmm. Chris was saying. I didn't think about Cloverfield. Well, because you know how, like that was really people just reacting and trying to survive to a, a monster as well. T.J. Miller was uh, yeah. providing uh, commentary in the movie. Oh, I forgot T.J. Miller was in Cloverfield. Yeah, you get you get the double T.J.'s in this as well. So, the, I mean, there's oh, I that. I rewatched that last. Uh, let's see. <laughs> this, uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised by this movie in a couple ways. Um, the non-spoiler spoiler one is that we get to see some people get fucking wrecked in this movie. And uh, kind of great. Especially for a pg-13 movie uh right was it was it i felt i feel like it was was it zach i am checking on that right now hold on (laughs) you guys are too fast for me (laughs) someone say something dude okay we just Uh, we just had the underwater it's absolutely it's absolutely pg-13 and uh there there's one fuck in the movie so oh yeah See, this reminded me more of like something like Gravity, where it's kind of a situation where it feels very claustrophobic and you're following one character very kind of intensely, except maybe more with a body count. Um, but yeah, I thought the the murky water kind of look that the director seemed to really like. I don't know. It kind of like felt like a detriment or maybe the theater yeah, I saw it in was just a little too dark. Like nah. if you see this in a bad theater, you're going to have not have a good time. <laughs> Cause it I saw this in of... a good theater and it was too dark. Like a hundred percent. Like those scenes were like trying to watch a movie through a toilet bowl full of diarrhea. It was just not mince words. Uh, Cause there are sequences where the char- where characters are like, what is that? And I'm like, I don't know. I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't I have even noticed. I'd tell you. It out. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, it's one of those horror movies that I feel like spends too much time masking the, uh, the creatures. And there is a reveal of sorts later on, which we'll get into on in our spoiler section. Uh, I do got to say though, Zach, that, I didn't think the monsters were as scary as the the claustrophobic feeling that this film. No, did no, really it well. it, it, this isn't. This is no alien. Uh, it doesn't build up tension that great. It just they're kind of walking, trudging slowly through the sea floor. But when they're actually still in the underwater facility and they're climbing through uh, ducts and a lot of cave yeah. and things like that, that was very claustrophobic and really effective. I just wish there was more of it in this movie. Um, I do. Yeah, there, are I some, um, there are some great performances here. Uh, Christian Stewart, I think, does a uh, you know a good job uh, leading this film. You know, she she's likable and and you, you know you root for her, which is always Badass. important. Oh, yeah. I do got to say, Chris, you can be our tiebreaker right now. I, I Zach and I had a little conversation that I thought that um, Colleen Wing from the uh, Iron Fist series is in this movie as well. Uh, I forget the actress's actual name. Uh, I felt like she was the most uh, annoying Jessica, character. Jessica Henwick? Yes. Uh, I thought she was the most uh, annoying character in recent horror film history. Uh, Zach disagreed. I'd like to hear you uh, weigh in on this because I felt like she was the most whiny, annoying character possible. And I was hoping she was going to get eaten and killed at any moment. Uh, no, I don't agree that she's the most annoying. Um, I don't really remember her character. <laughs> the only characters I really remember are Kirsten Stewart, the captain, who's the, uh, the, the guy from Ocean's 12 and, um, and TJ Miller. So those are the only three characters that really stood out to me. <laughs> I'll do an impression of her character. We need you to do this. No, I can't just leave me here to die. 
<laughs> times a thousand. That's the character. Oh, okay. So yeah, uh, I do kind of remember her, but yeah, I thought those those two characters were kind of just like man, woman. They weren't very like distinct to me. They're like kind of like the good characters who, you know. Yeah, John Gallagher. Like, he's a he's a great actor. He was great in Ten Cloverfield Lane. So I, I, I wish he'd oh, give him yeah. a little more to do. All yeah. I got, all I gotta say is, if this was a slasher movie, those motherfuckers would have been gone in the first five minutes. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, uh, I mean. They kind of exist to be like a, a plot point of being like, well, these two people are good. So I guess that the, hopefully they'll make it. <laughs> TJ Miller, nobody gives a fuck about you. <laughs> We're here just to watch you die. If you're comparing it to kind of similar films of the genre, like um, like The Leviathan, which came out in 1989, which was almost on my 1989 list. I really like that movie. And I don't oh, think Daylight? It's- I don't think it's as interesting as that movie. The creature isn't quite as uh, the creatures or creature isn't as cool as the creature in the Leviathan. And I didn't think the crew altogether was, um, had as many, uh, was as unique or deep rising, which yeah. let's face it is like the bar that this, yeah, that all movies like this must, must not, reach. <laughs> not as fun as deep rising. Uh, no, the um, Poseidon adventure. Way, way more fun than the abyss though, which is good. If you want to fall the fuck asleep, Oh, <laughs> God. I haven't seen The Abyss in a while. I remember liking it. I, I saw it I saw it as a kid, and it was the worst movie a kid could possibly see. Yeah, uh, it's probably a movie you should see when you're a little bit older. You're right. Like, it was just, I'm like, nothing's happening. This is more boring <laughs> than June. What's going on? I still need to see uh, Deep Star 6, which I, I've heard is another good entry in a genre. Uh, oh, I haven't seen that. I've made it about 20 minutes into it and stopped. So if you okay. do, you have more endurance than I do. <laughs> okay. um, so yeah, I, we... I think that, sorry, I was just to add a little bit more. Yeah. I think this movie just needed a little bit more like what you were saying, Casey of the, the threat of being underwater that far down deep and your whole base is like, is uh compromised is scary enough. So I feel like if it had more tension surrounding that rather than like, what what is out there this sort of mystery um i think that would have worked a little bit better for it and had a little bit more interesting characters that you could follow along with and actually root for for sure um Mm -hmm. i uh i definitely feel like uh they of all of the the scripts that use this form um it may have the least interesting crew of all of these uh the subgenre, uh, which is saying something because uh, some of these movies have really annoying crew members and this just, some of them just felt flat to me, but I do got to say like, this was well made. It just wasn't great. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't like say go out of your way to see this movie, but it's like, if it's streaming, you're at home. Mm-hmm. If you have a, uh, an AMC a list or something like that, do it. You could do a lot worse, especially right now. Yeah. All right, so we, before we get into spoilers briefly, guys, final uh, ratings for Underwater. I think I gave it a three out of five. I think that's exact. Yeah, uh, three out of five for me as well. I was also a three out of five, so straight threes. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I, okay, so we have to talk about a major spoiler because it's something the filmmakers actually came out and said after the movie. Yeah, so spoiler alert, spoiler, spoiler. Okay, Cthulhu's in this movie. Let's just get it out there. Okay, so it's official. They they said that. It is the Cthulhu. Filmmakers said that. Okay. Uh, now I feel like this is a little bit of marketing suicide that they didn't come out and say, "Hey, this is a movie that's got Cthulhu in it." I see why they didn't because if you went into the movie expecting to see Cthulhu, you would be nothing but disappointed because well, he- there's like there's no setup for it at all. No, he's so just like, there. So like any other movie would have like a scene at the beginning being like, uh, you know, like, oh, so-and-so was really into Legends of Cthulhu or so-and-so being like, oh, I always wanted to to deep dive because I was like interested in like Cthulhu and H.P. Lovecraft and so on. Just something, something to and set up the facts. Someone is into Cthulhu because there's a picture of him in someone's locker. But ah, never mentioned. That's not enough. <laughs> no, and not even noticeable. Like I would have known unless someone had mentioned that. That wasn't yeah. originally what was happening in the script, and it was a post-production decision, which is why we didn't get any kind of tie-in whatsoever. The filmmakers have said 
Uh, they wanted it to be like a biblical uh, behemoth with like a, you know, like a whale with arms and legs, more or less. Uh, mm. it, it, looked like, it looked like Cthulhu's head, sort of, because like, you don't really see his full body. It's just like this. Apparently, big, there's a shot head. you could see his wings to confirm that it's Cthulhu. Like, but, you know, if the water wasn't so fucking murky, maybe yeah. we could have noticed. Yeah. <laughs> like, it just. I, I didn't really. I was okay that Kirsten Stewart sacrifices herself in this movie, but like I felt like they just kind of didn't have the budget to do a cool shot where she tries to escape with that pot anyway, and the creatures are trying to attack her as she's trying to reach the surface, and you know, yeah, and you there get, needs to be more of a build up to that. Yeah, and you get like a closer up shot of Cthulhu. That would have been cool, and we didn't get that. She just blows up the freaking thing. Like she could have blown it up and then tried to escape, even if it says it's like in a malfunction. That would have been. I feel like. Cool. I feel like anticlimactic endings is going to be a uh, recurring theme in this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, unless, unless it's uh, crossing the streams. I, I've got some fun stuff. <laughs> like, anticlimactic uh, endings is definitely a theme in this episode, except for <laughs> one movie. Uh, yeah, you know, I I think my other issue with this is going back to you know just not an interesting crew. I think the other problem was that they killed off the interesting crew members. Like there was this character, uh, probably the best death in the movie, the first one, Rodrigo. He was one of the more interesting characters. He's the first one to go. <laughs> oh, he was. That was good death. That I, I think it should have been the captain. And I was honestly, I thought the captain. I was, I was waiting for the I all. Like you know, the captain. He was okay, but I was kind of waiting for the old captain turns on the crew trope, which they didn't go with. But uh, he was fine. I just, I kind of like Rodrigo more. Um, TJ Miller, who was kind of the more entertaining of the crew members, goes, yeah, he got on my nerves. You know, <laughs> TJ so, Miller gets on my fucking nerves. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, Zach. Yeah. Or sorry, uh, Casey. If you like to have, I like him in doses. Friends with TJ Miller sometimes. Well, TJ TJ Miller just looks exactly like one of my very best friends. So we kind of joke that I'm good friends with TJ Miller. I've never met the man. Like he looks enough like TJ TJ Miller that Kevin Nealon came up to him in an airport and was fucking with him because he thought he was TJ Miller, which is hilarious. Uh, so yeah, it's it, it's a pretty damn close. Uh, it, it's uncanny. We could lie to the people listening to this show and say we have TJ Miller on the show, show my friend, and just never have him talk, and it, they would believe it. He's just such an unlikable actor that they have to give him like a stuffed bunny rabbit to make him any kinds of like to give you any kind of like emotional connection to him whatsoever. <laughs> it's like, Don't oh, let this a- rabbit die. He, oh. has a- he, has a- he has a stuffed bunny. Isn't that adorable? It's like, don't you care about him? God, I, I, <laughs> yeah, if they could have gone more cliche with this crew, I would have been surprised actually. Like, this is, it was pretty much. Like if they opened a book with a bunch of tropes and just did did a checklist to come up with this crew, I wouldn't be surprised. But uh, not that that's bad because uh, who gives a shit? It was it was more entertaining than ninety percent of the stuff we're going to talk about the rest of this episode. Yeah, I think we're good I'm on on uh, underwater for now. Oh, Casey, you have not seen a movie I have seen, sir. So you haven't you haven't seen many movies I've seen, Zach. So there. <laughs> I will just talk about the good movie I saw <laughs> this month or last month since I just brought it up. The Turning. No? You're going to confuse the audience. You want me to talk about The Turning or, or Color Out of Space? <laughs> so I almost saw The Turning, you guys, but at the last minute, I took the coward's way out and I saw the I saw the reviews that were coming in and I was like, oh no, maybe I should go see Underwater instead. <laughs> So my, that, my body actively rejected me going to see the turning and gave me the flu for a week so that I didn't have to. Listen, you motherfuckers. I saw the grudge. That was a piece <laughs> of shit. I also saw the turning. That was a piece of shit. I, you guys owe me restitution. <laughs> All right. Well, you want to start talking about the turning Zach? <sighs> oh, okay, fine. All right. What's wrong with what's wrong with this movie? Just you can you can literally do it in two minutes and say it sucks. Don't see it, blah. But tell me why. I was excited to see this. Like I saw the trailer and I was like, that looks interesting. I like Finn Wolfhard. I like the turning of the screw is like a cool story. And there's another movie based on that story that I think is really cool. And um, so I was I thought the cinematography looked good and I was kind of interested in seeing it. So why is this so bad? It's directed by Floria Sigismondi 
who I uh, say no more. My least favorite director. I've actually never heard of them. She mainly had music video director, but she directed that film, The Runaways, a few years back. Uh, so the star is Mackenzie Davis from the latest Terminator film. She is good in this. Uh, Can I ask you something, Zach, really yeah. quickly? Yes, yeah, sure. Would this movie have been better if it had Spuds Mackenzie in the main role? <laughs> what is who is Spuds Mackenzie? <laughs> oh Jesus! Christ. Okay, this this is every listener unsubscribing right now. I want you to Google Google Spuds Mackenzie, Zach. Leave this in. Keep, first, keep talking about the journey. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll find Spuds McKenzie for you. Keep Continue. Well, you're just trying to humiliate me, Casey, but it's okay. Spuds McKenzie is a fictional dog? Yes. Oh, he, okay. He, he's a party animal dog. Look at this. Look at look at how much, like, this is his ghost. They did commercials later with his ghost. Uh, Spuds McKenzie would have been a welcome addition to this film because he would have okay. injected some life into the proceedings. <laughs> this is a lifeless movie okay so yeah the turning as uh chris brought up it is based on the novella by henry james turn of the screw which i did not know and you wouldn't know based off the trailers because the trailers tell you absolutely nothing about this film well i, I saw the trailer and i was like huh this looks like a movie i saw an old movie called the innocence and then I was like, wait, that movie, The Innocence, was based on The Turning of the Screw. And then I saw the, the title, The Turning, and I was like, oh, it's The Turning of the Screw. <laughs> I mean, just the fact that there's a nanny and there are two creepy kids and some ghostly goings on. It's like, oh, yeah, that's The Turn of the Screw. Yeah, you know, my, my only question going into this is this was, is this going to be worse than The Grudge? And the answer is no, but it's close. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, it's just the trailers really the problem with the trailers for me is they don't you they don't tell you anything about what the story is about, like at all. And the pro- the reason they don't is because there really isn't that great of a story here. Like I've read about the novella a bit, and I feel like that story worked really well for its time, but they didn't expand on it enough here, and there's just not a lot to it, and at least the way they presented it and told it just mm-hmm. isn't very interesting. What is the story of the turning? It's well, it, the novella took place at the turn of the century, uh, so like 1898 yeah. or so. I know the turn of the script, yeah. Well, here they update it, it takes place in 1994, and they tell you that by showing uh, Kurt Cobain's death on TV, anyway. So it's about a I guess she's a teacher, but she takes this job as more or less like a in house like nanny for this uh, wealthy. Uh, family who these two like orphan kids their parents were killed in a terrible car accident one of them is finn wolfhard the other is a actress named brooklyn prince who is uh uh does a good job in this role uh being a kid <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so she was, see she was like the the one like really cringy line from the trailer she was like like i'd ever tell <laughs> she She's a kid, and she plays a kid well. Finn Wolfhard plays an annoying little shit in this film, <laughs> and I like Finn Wolfhard in in, the, in Stranger Things, and he's he's a great actor. But he they they he's an annoying fucking character in this movie. Yeah, so she's a in house sitter going to babysit these kids, and there's just a kind of mystery as to what happened exactly in this. Mm. They live on this really grand estate. The setting is cool. They just don't do anything with it. There's like a really awesome shining style hedge maze in this on their property it's like a huge ass nice. property it looks cool they don't do anything with it there's also like um a like nanny of sorts that's already there uh this older woman named mrs gross that's kind of been the caretaker of the kids but uh they hire mackenzie davis to kind of be their teacher and watch after them as well you just kind of you hear about this um there used to be another person that lived on the property that kind of watched after the horses that was like a father kind of figure to uh finn wolfhard's character after their parents died and he mysteriously died and his character is named uh, mr horsey man uh God, honestly i forget his name <laughs> uh, his day na- his name is harold balzania <laughs> no that's that sydney applebaum yeah so Basically, kind of as you do in movies with like a huge kind of mansion or estate, you 
spooky things start to happen. There's like these creepy dolls in a room and one of them turns its head. She kind of starts to see things, uh, ghostly figures in a mirror, which the ghost effects in this are terrible. Basically what happened is that they, the other uh, caretakers uh, that have gone to st- watch out for these kids have all like left or at least the last one, like they're le- left mysteriously vanished without much of a trace. And uh, this is, I am going to spoil this movie. Do not see it. <laughs> the ghost in this movie basically looks like a drunk Jermaine uh, Clement from What We Do in the Shadows. Like, Ooh, very blurry. That actually makes me want to see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. You like to see a very blurred figure, but he looks like, you know, Vladislav from What We Do in the Shadows, the film. Not- <laughs> and it's just, it's really silly. It's not scary at all. You're giving me a great idea for a movie, Zach, right now. So basically, he's kind of had a bad influence on Finn Wolfhard's character, and maybe some of his personality has seeped into Finn Wolfhard. Because uh, Finn Wolfhard kind of hits on Mackenzie Davis's character throughout this movie in a very kind of creepy way. Uh, like he'll like stand over her while she's sleeping, and it's very unsettling, uh, but and just stupid. But it just, it goes on. Not much happens. Just the kids are little shits half the time. You wonder why she just hasn't fucking left already. She like calls her friend half the time saying, I don't know if I can stay here. And you're like, just leave. Mm. Uh, Basically what happens is eventually they try and she tries to escape with the children uh, as this kind of ghost is sort of tracking them. The caretaker, the the lady that's uh, been staying there was this older woman is was a bitch is killed by this ghost she tries to escape with the children and then all of a sudden it resets about like 30 minutes but prior to this escape scene and she was just imagining this sequence in her head oh fuck that shit i hate that she also has a mother who is like uh crazy and in like a like a treatment center but she's like off the hinges and the caretaker, Mrs. Gross, like tells her, oh, I hope, you know, you don't have the same thing your mother has. Hopefully it's not genetic. So they're like setting in motion that she's probably crazy. And, you know, she asked the she has a scene with the kids where she asks them if they see this ghost figure and they like say no. And then all of a sudden you see a scene where she sees her mother uh, in this treatment center again doing something. And then her mother turns to her and you don't see her mother's face, but then she screams. And then the movie just ends. There is no conclusion to this film. That's the problem with wow. it. I mean, wow. one of many problems. It just ends. Like I was like half I was like falling asleep and then all of a sudden it ended. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I thought uh, like I just what happened? Like it just ends. Like the writers just decided <laughs> not to end this movie. The crazy thing about this is on Wikipedia, apparently this is this is from Amblin. Apparently this initially was a passion project from Steven Spielberg. It was gonna be directed by someone oh, else, yeah. Juan Carlos Fresnadillo. And five weeks before they were starting to shoot it, uh, a writer was brought on to do like a, a rewrite. He wrote re- he rewrote one page, and Steel- Spielberg hated it so much that he fired the director and this this rewriter uh, until they eventually brought on this new director. And what you see is what you get. And I'm like, how could he be happy with this? What was the original version like that he hated that changed the story so much? Because there is no ending here. So I like I don't know what happened, but. It's just, it's just really boring. Like I was enjoying it more than the grudge for the most part, just because of the atmosphere. And I was fig- figured there'd be more to it than what actually happened. And it just, nothing happens. And it's, so, it, so it's basically like it, the only reason it takes place in 1994. So that they, they don't have cell phones. Yes. It's it, that there's literally no other reason they don't leave this house. Really? I feel uh, like at a certain point, all horror movies are just going to have to take place before like 1997 so that nobody has cell phones. Or, you know, you can just have a cell phone that doesn't have a signal. <laughs> like, like, yeah, but that's going to get less and less common as, like, technology improves. Or your cell phone can break. I don't know. It's not like that. It's not <laughs> or that hard you hard. have yeah. the tongue the tongue come out of the phone, like Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1. The, I'm, a, I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. Ah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Anyway, there's just there's just not much to see unless you want to see you know a ghost that looks like uh, Jermaine Clement. I uh, you know I uh, this is the second movie of 2020 to receive an F cinema score. It's just boring. Wow. It's just boring after the grudge. What what would your what would your score be, Zach? I, I gave it one star because for decent performances, that's about it. Uh, I I'm, I'm friendly with my low ratings, but one one star is as high as I'll go. The, the grudge is really be better, so. Thank you, Tergiwary. 
Oh, I am so I'm so glad my illness prevented me from seeing this movie. Uh, it sounds like it could dire leak my balls, Zach, which is a segue into a movie about Hansel. Hold on, I'm not done. Oh, okay, go I'm not for done it. with the turning. <laughs> go for it. Because I was gonna it. say, if you want to see this movie, but you don't want to see the 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 crappy version, you should check out. The Innocence. <laughs> oh yeah, that version's actually like really good. You should see that version. Yeah. So this is a this is also an ad- adaptation of the Turning of the Screw, um, and it's our Turn of the Screw, uh, except this one was made in 1961 in glorious black and white, and it's just a fucking atmospheric, creepy ass, creepy ass movie um, with essentially the same plot you were talking about, Zach, except for the ending is is a lot different. <laughs> oh good, I would hope so. But it's essentially about this nanny who, essentially about this nanny who takes on this job of looking after these two kids in this giant estate, um, and then creepy shit starts to happen, and then slowly over the course of the film, you start to hear whispers and you see like visions of the of the people who have passed on, and then slowly you start to piece together what's going on with the children and what their connection to those uh, dead people were and why that's happening. Um, I think that's the one that heavily influenced the others, even though they're not yes. really similar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd say as far as like pit tone and atmospheric, it's very similar to the, to the others. Yeah. I just, I, I think in 2020, you know, I've seen too many horror movies, haunted house movies where so much stuff is going on and, and that have way more foreboding atmosphere and, and there just needs to be more happening and, you know, an mm-hmm. ending would have been nice. I'm, so yeah, watch The Innocence if you're interested in the story, or read the book. I'm sure it's a it's a great novel, novella. An ending would have been nice, and that is our transition to Hansel and Gretel and Hansel. So yeah, Hansel and Gretel. Actually, Gretel and Hansel. Uh, does yeah. it does it have any mermen in this movie? Not I that I one. remember. Oh. So automatically, it's worse than the lighthouse. I, I love yes. that their their idea to reinvent this title was just to you know, switch around Hansel and Gretel, <laughs> Gretel and Hansel. Well, it kind of has to be Gretel and Hansel because Gretel is kind of the more titular character. That would have been hilarious if it was Gretel with Hansel, <laughs> Gretel, and also Hansel is there <laughs> featuring Hansel, <laughs> Gretel featuring Hansel. Anyway, this film was all right. It, it looks really great, as uh, I'm sure you've uh, noted, Chris. It looks really good. It's very beautiful, but it also kind of reminded me of like a student film a little bit. Um, just in how kind of digital the photography is and how kind of more noticeable every shot is. But it is like, this movie is like my aesthetic. According, <laughs> Like this is like what I want to look for in a, in a, in a, like an American Gothic story about a witch or a dark fairy tale. Just beautiful cinematography of, of, of the forest and of leaves. Uh, it's really creepy ass witch's house. Um, some great lighting. Uh, yeah, it's, it may be one of the, probably it'll end up being like one of the better looking movies. All, I'll see all year long, which just is a f- unfortunate that the movie itself doesn't quite meet up to that, <laughs> but I'll let you talk, talk about it a little bit, Zach. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it's really has this kind of painterly, uh, vibe to it it looks fantastic just not a lot happens they it feels like they're stretching out the story as much as they can uh you know kind of sophia lillis plays gretel she's uh from the it series which is what she would know her from most likely Mm -hmm. she's great it's directed by oz perkins who you would know as he was in legally blonde (laughs) (laughs) i'm so also in dead and breakfast i think too yeah i'm I'm, he's but he's become a pretty uh well-known uh, director, and uh, it's cool to see uh, some of his work here. I look forward it's to also Anthony Perkins' work. son. I sh- did not realize that. That is awesome. Are you serious? You didn't know that? I did not know that. I feel like I yeah. knew it. I've I feel like I've heard this before a long time ago, and I forgot. But yeah, that's all. Awesome. He's Norman Bates' son. That explains a lot. Yeah, me and my girlfriend watched Psycho the night before we went and saw Gretel and Hansel, and I was like, "This is like a precursor." It is not as good as Psycho. <laughs> no. It's a segue. My girlfriend had never seen Psycho before. Oh, did not man. Know the ending. Did not know the ending, and she did not see it coming. You should it have showed great. her the Vince Vaughn one and said, this is the OG, man. <laughs> this should have shown her the what? This is the original. <laughs> should have shown her the what version? The, the, the Vince Vaughn. Gus Van Sant. Oh the, oh, the Gus Van Sant version? <laughs> no, God, no. 
Uh, no, so Gretel and Hansel, it just, I was just waiting for the shoe to drop and it to like kick up a notch and it just kind of ends before anything really exciting happens. There's an over-reliance on dream sequences here. Like you don't know what's a dream sequence and what's not half the time. And it's just, it's mm-hmm. pretty, it's only 87 minutes long, but it is kind of slow paced for those minutes. Like you can tell like the director really loves the way it looks, which it looks great. Yeah. It's just there needed to be more going on. I was hoping for a little more blood and guts. And, you know, I wanted to see a kid get eaten. basically. Yeah. And yeah, you don't yeah. see that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. There needed to be. I mean, this is being like pitched as a horror movie. Uh, you know, I don't think anyone's coming out and saying like, it's not like a Guillermo del Toro situation where he comes out and he's like, this isn't a horror movie. It's a gothic romance or whatever. It's a gothic fairy tale. Uh, but this really is more of a gothic fairy tale than a horror movie, I feel like, um, because there's just not a lot of horror in it. I mean, there's some suspense. There's like a couple of you know creepy situations, but it needed to be way more. Um, we needed a lot more foreboding. I will say I really like the actress who plays the witch. Alice um, Creek. Like she's just her like presence is really great. Um, I really like just the, her strange talking, her speech pattern. She is just such an interesting face, um, but she's just not. She's just not very like. She didn't feel very threatening for most of the thing, um, which you know that's kind of her thing is that she's trying to seduce these kids. She's trying to. She's not even like intending to. I don't know. I don't know. Do we want to go into the the, the yeah spoilers? spoilers, kind spoilers. Of? I, I think this seduction that you talk about lasts way too long, and you never really get a clear picture of exactly what she does to these kids. I guess she burns them in a furnace, like tradition with the story but like well she's wanting gretel to basically like inherit her powers or yeah so they add this whole her powers. Um, kind of gretel gets witch powers in this film and mm. that's kind of an interesting addition i didn't necessarily think it was needed but like it's interesting yeah. she's trying to pass on the line because they give this backstory about this young girl who uh, like has this illness and she, this illness is extracted from her by somebody, but in return for get, removing this illness, she is like given these really kind of evil mm-hmm. abilities and she can f- foresee people's deaths and then kill people, I guess. on whim. And I guess you're led to believe like that, that, that lady, that little girl grew up to be the witch, but she, but then, <laughs> yeah. And then like, towards the end of the movie, it's kind of like twist. It was her mother. And it's like, okay, why is that? Why is that important? Like, why is that surprising? It was the witch's daughter. Right, 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 right. The little girl's mother is the witch. Yes. Yeah, but it's kind of like, okay, why is that? Why is that interesting? Yeah, I just, <laughs> you know, I, I, I just, I will say it was, it was entertaining seeing um, Hansel and Gretel uh, get high in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that reminded me of the scene in uh, the Pixar movie, The Good Dinosaur, where they just oh, like yeah. randomly eat these like hallucinogenic shrooms or something yeah they come across these mushrooms and they're like are these can we eat these are they good and gretel's like well i guess we should eat them <laughs> find out she's like i will talk to them and find out and then she's like this they're good it says eat me and then they eat them. and then just hard cut to them like laughing like idiots fun fact this is not the first time hansel and gretel have uh gotten high in, in, in a film there is a film called hansel and gretel get baked that came out like six years ago or something. Yeah, there is. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was like one of those like no budget stoner horror movies. And it was trying to cash in on the Jeremy Renner movie Ooh. also, which is like, wow. If anything says like differences between like, when did Hansel and Gretel, the Jeremy Renner come out? Probably like 2010, 2011. I thought it was earlier than that. It's just, uh, God, I hate but that if, movie so if much. If anything says, like, the difference between movies then and movies now, like that version of Hansel and Gretel and this version of, of Gretel and Hansel, it's like, you can see where, like, horror is moving. Hey, a seven-year-old uh, Hansel gets high as fuck in this film. Uh, so, yeah, and the then it just kind of, it ends just as you think it's going to pick up. She kills the witch pretty easily. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah he's in restraints and then she just like throws the witch's staff at her and burns her alive yeah. and that's yeah i mean to be fair that's the original fairy tale pretty much yeah except yeah. it's just not very the witch herself is not very like threatening through most of it i mean you need to like be worried for 
you know, Hansel and for them and for her to have some real menace. So like, yeah, like a scene, just throwing a scene where she like is actually eating a, what, you know, it does show like what she's done to previous kids, but you know, show like a more threatening scene where she does like kill the fuck out of a kid or something. Yeah. What was your final rating? I think I gave it like a three and a half. Cause it's, you know, it's very, it was very pretty to look at. It's very enjoyable. It's super short. So like, you don't feel like you're wasting your time. <laughs> like you get in and you get out pretty much. Um, I'm glad I saw it. Um, I was about a two and a half. You liked it a bit more than I did. I just wanted a little bit more to happen, but I do think it's a decent time. If it's a good rental or if you just feel like, you know, seeing- yeah, I was, I was never, even though it is kind of slow moving and then not a lot happens to it. I was never like, I wouldn't say I was necessarily bored. I just kind of was like, what else is going to happen? Oh, that, okay. That's it. Okay. Well, maybe something else will happen. <laughs> but uh, as far as like, if you've never seen a Nas Perkins movies movie, you know, his movies are pretty slow moving. Um, Black Goat's daughter is, is pretty awesome, but it, you know, that and I am the pretty thing that lives in the house are, are both pretty slow paced movies. So you should probably know what you're going in for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we have one more uh, film to get into before we do our uh, don't cross the stream segment. That is by far the best film. I saw over the last month. Uh, really, really enjoyed this movie. It's called Color Out of Space. Based oh, on the Lovecraft story of the same name. Directed by Richard Stanley. Casey, do you have anything you want to say about Richard Stanley before I get into the film? Yeah, if you haven't seen Lost Soul, the documentary on the making of the Doctor of... I, the Doctor of Island Moreau. The Island of Dr. Moreau. Um, you need to see this documentary. Uh, I feel like it should be required to be able to listen to this podcast or be one of the hosts, Zach, to see this documentary. Uh, What sucks is it was available on streaming, and I told everyone that I possibly could to watch it, and now it's not available uh, on any streaming service. You do have to pay to rent it, but it's the best like $3.99 you'll ever spend in your life, probably. Mm -hmm. Uh, It makes you feel a certain way for Richard Stanley that you want him to succeed, that you want a movie like the color out of space to come out. So watching this documentary and seeing him actually triumph and have this release, something that he's been wanting to do for years, get released makes you feel good. So also uh, see hardware. That movie's dope as shit. That's Richard Stanley as well. Continue Zach. I'm really interested to see more Stanley's work after seeing color out of space. Cause I really love this film. Uh, Nicholas Cage milks an alpaca on this movie, guys. <laughs> Anything you would have said afterwards. It's Cage, it's a it, it is a female alpaca, right? We're sure about that. I, I I don't know a lot about alpacas and milking, but I I don't know. I I, I guess I would assume it's female. <laughs> okay, good. So you, you know, I saw I saw Tom Green milk a bull once, and it was. Uh, Different kind of experience. This is one of the best times I've had at a horror movie in a while. If this came out last year, it would have been high up on my uh, top horror movies of the year. It's basically a bonkers, bonkers, uh, completely crazy mix of like the kind of crazy, craziness of Hereditary. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. A bit of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And just totally, totally prime Nicolas Cage uh, and alpacas. <laughs> and when did this come out? This came out, it hit like the uh, festival circuit last year, but it just came out limited release like a week ago. Oh, wow. Uh, it is fantastic. It is. People have been caring, uh, been inter- kind of comparing it to Mandy and it is sort of, it almost feels like because oh, yeah. it's both star Nicolas Cage, but it does almost kind of feel like a companion piece for Nicolas Cage. Cause they're both, they they're very different, but they you know they both have a really interesting color palette and just really f- great to look at, and they're both kind of insane. This one is more insane than Mandy. I watched Mandy recently. This one is is Nicolas Cage is way out there. <laughs> so, if you like your Nicolas Cage, like completely off the chain, I highly recommend this. It's fantastic. Yeah, I I really need to see this movie. Um... I've been wanting to. It's just a very limited release, and I live very far away from everywhere that's playing it. And Cage is not the only one that gives uh, a great performance in this. Jolie Richardson is in this, who you might know as Lieutenant 
uh, start from Event Horizon. She plays Cage's wife, and she is she matches him uh, scene for scene. She is great. Uh, she's also Mackenzie Davis's mother in the turning. Fun fact: I did not know that until last night, because <laughs> you can't really, you don't get a great look at uh, her in uh, the turning. Uh, there's some really great performances in here. Tommy Chong is in this, basically playing himself. It's it's tremendous. He is really great. And wow, he has he's awesome. So Tommy Chong and Nicolas Cage in the same film, guys, a horror film. The, need I say more? This movie is fantastic. Uh, Madeline Arthur plays Lavinia. Nic- uh, Nicholas Cage's daughter is great. Uh, Brendan Meyer plays his son. He was in The Guest. He was the kid in The Guest. He's really good. Also, Julian Hillard is Jack, who is a uh, young, uh, I think, Luke in The Haunting of Hill House. Also good. It's, it's just so much happens in this movie. I don't want to spoil it. Just it's never there's never a boring scene. It's uh, this 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 story, this Lovecraft story, has been adapted. Uh, before there was a film called the curse in 1987 starring will wheaton which i haven't seen but i'm curious to compare the two yeah uh don't waste your time uh yeah no there's <laughs> also a movie with i think it's boris karloff an adaptation called i think it's like die monster die of this story. yeah which ugh, adaptation it's about as it's about as faithful as the fucking omega man is to i am legend you know it's, it's one of those Hmm. anyway this is fantastic color out of space is really really i highly recommend it it was uh i gave it a very high four out of five i was very tempted to give it four and a half if we had 4.25 it would be a 4.25 it's really great highly i highly recommend it if it gets to your local theater go out of your way to see it it's a good time just maybe don't take your mom to it <laughs> i i took my parents to it. Do, Zach. my mom was not the biggest fan it's it's pretty disturbing at times <laughs> when i say there's parts of john Carp- carpenter's the thing there i i very much mean that so i'll just leave it at that nice it's it's really great highly recommend it color out of space okay so i want to continue this this trend of four star recommendations i want to do some rapid fire because i've been i've been sick for a bit so i've been watching a lot of stuff on streaming and so i have some very very good recommendations for you in this segment which we call don't cross the streams play the music If there's no music, leave that in. Okay, so um, I actually watched all kinds of stuff. Uh, I watched a couple Zach recommended. Uh, so Zach did a review of the film that is on Shutter called Tigers Are Not Afraid. He did a review on the website, uh, miserablepileofsecrets.com. Um, I watched it. I loved it. I gave it four and a half stars. It is the highest rated of any horror movie I've seen in quite some time. Uh, it's also depressing as shit. Uh, so it's not a feel good horror movie, especially when you're laying in bed sick. So that's usually not my thing. I, I enjoy having fun watching horror, but this was such a tremendous film. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, it deals with real life issues and a plight that has to be heard. So that's tigers are not afraid available on shutter. Uh, very quickly. I also want to say that I watched one cut of the dead per Zach's recommendation yes. in the best of 2019 episode. Yes. And I do have to concur, that is one great fucking movie. So I highly recommend that one as well. Just remember, when the credits roll, pay attention to how much longer is in the movie and don't just stop there because you <laughs> would ruin everything. Uh, but no spoilers. Just keep watching. Just keep watching until there's no time left. Keep watching until it kicks you back to the menu. So again, that is available on Shutter. But I got some new stuff for you guys that I want to talk to you about as well that we haven't mentioned on the show yet. Uh, The first one is a little movie from Australia called Necrotronic. And what's interesting about this one is uh, Chris was talking about how so many movies are just trying to avoid the cell phone thing. This one actually needs the cell phone thing to happen because it's about a demonic Pokemon Go uh, and people fighting against demons Uh, that have infested the internet and are starting to possess people through their phones. Uh, And these people are called necromancers. It's basically an action comedy that is actually funny. 
uh, an action horror comedy because something about horror comedies, a lot of my friends love them. I know Zach's really into them. If there's an unfunny horror comedy, I consider it kind of like the bane of my existence. <laughs> and I get really mad uh, watching it. This was actually super funny. Uh, there, There's a character that's basically a... Uh, a best friend character you'll know him as soon as you see him he's one of the funniest characters in the movie and you'll just love him the entire time uh this is a movie by the roche turner brothers uh who really knocked it out of the park uh i don't want to go too into detail on anything because a chris has to leave soon and b i have another movie to get into that i really really want to talk about so I just want to tell you, see this. I gave it four stars out of five. It is available on Shutter. It is Necrotronic. So we and got. That is. So you got. We got three recommendations so far on this segment. This might be a record for the most movies you've recommended on Don't Cross the Streams. So Tigers Are Not Afraid, which is a uh, excellent kind of horror drama. One Cut of yes. the Head, which is mandatory viewing. If you've not seen that, listeners, watch that movie. And Necrotronic, which I still have to see, and I'm excited to see it. All on Shutter. All on Shutter. Uh, the next choice is not available on Shutter. It is available on Amazon Prime. Okay. Uh, so this one, it's a film I've always wanted to see, and I've just not been able to track it down. It's actually kind of hard to find. And I saw that it was on Amazon Prime being recommended to me, and I was so excited. Uh, it is called Highway to Hell. Oh. Um, now, this movie... Holy shit. Okay, so uh, Highway to Hell was marketed to look a little bit more like a Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Uh, because there's a there's a bad guy called the Hell Cop that kind of looks like Freddy. Um, but this is actually pretty heavy in comedy. Uh, it's a very surreal movie, and it is just really fun. Um, it stars Chad Lowe and Christy Swanson. Uh, it's directed by Ada De Jong, uh, who is the director of the great Drop Dead Fred. Uh, this came out in 1990, uh, and it's one of those ones that should be a cult classic right now, but not enough people have seen it. Uh, so basically, a guy's driving late at night. He accidentally opens a portal to hell. His girlfriend gets kidnapped by the hell cop who has handcuffs that are actually um, hands, demonic hands that grab you. So, uh, which, they, uh, which they actually took from the Police Academy cartoon or vice versa, um, because that was a gag on there. And I just thought it was interesting to see a horror version of that. Uh, what, he goes into hell to chase after his girlfriend. And one thing you'll notice about hell is it's pretty similar to the cantina scene from Star Wars in a lot of places which makes you just absolutely love it. The first scene has uh, the in hell has him go to a diner uh, that is run by Ben Stiller and his parents. Uh, ben Stiller has multiple roles in this film, actually. Hold the phone. Gilbert Gottfried plays Hitler in this film? Gilbert Gottfried plays Hitler in this what? film. What the hell? Ben, uh, ben, ben Stiller plays Attila the Hun uh, and a chef. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's fucking weird, man. Uh, so we get to see a lot of car racing, a, a little too much at times, but it's pretty fun. Um, but there are all these surreal hell scenes that are, are part of this film that I can't recommend enough. It actually really feels a lot like Drop Dead Fred, which I absolutely love that movie. Um, but it does have horrific elements and the comedy actually lands. It's pretty funny. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. I gave this one four stars as well. I'm starting to think that if I watch it a couple more times, it might move up rating wise. Awesome. Uh, that's how much I loved it. I'll just say, uh, be careful when you're searching that on IMDb, cause there is something else called highway to hell that came out in 1990. This says 1991 on IMDb. Uh, okay, okay. It's one of those things where Amazon has the wrong. The other time. film, Highway to Hell, that came out in 1990, is not the right one. You're looking for the one with uh, Ben Stiller and Christy Swanson. Uh, yeah, look for look for Chad Lowe and Christy Swanson as the leads. Uh, that's that's basically the one that you want. 
Uh, and it's the one that's available on Amazon Prime, so uh, it should come up. Uh, if it has a very Freddy Krueger-looking cop as the cover image, you're in the right place. Awesome. Well, I do have one available on HBO Go, so it's a different kind of... Uh, but it's uh, Or just HBO, if you have HBO. That is the TV series The Outsider, which is based on the Stephen King book, The Outsider. Ooh, I've been wanting to watch this. Yeah, it's a great book. It's a good book. The book could have been better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was pretty into it. Uh, I I feel like I could see why they wrote it a certain way so that it could be made into a television series now. I feel uh, like, it's really apparent. I feel like the TV series has been is is uh, really kind of ratcheted up the, the the tension in the book. Like it kind of expedites things a bit. The book stretches things out a lot more than it needs to, and I feel like. The book, the this adaptation so far, it's it's really fantastic. Uh, Jason um, Bates, Bateman, sorry, Jason Bateman uh, has directed a couple episodes, and he is fantastic um, early on. I, I can't recommend it up. Uh, the actress that plays Holly Gibney, I forget her name, but she is uh, she's nominated for I think uh, Academy Award this year for Harriet Tubman. She is phenomenal. Really, just a fantastic series. Uh, just the more you learn about this mystery, and uh, it's just it's really uh, engaging, intriguing. I highly recommend it. Uh, definitely check that out. It's on HBO Go or HBO. It's probably on HBO now if you have that. So, I also it's definitely the series everyone's talking about. Right I now. also I'm just yeah, gonna say, sure. uh, I saw Tammy and the T Rex, Casey. Oh my god! Oh, wonderful! Yay! <laughs> and. Wow. I saw your review on Letterboxd, Zach. <laughs> Thank you. Do you um, want to break it to Casey or do you want me to? I didn't like it as much as you did, Casey, who gave it a four <laughs> or five stars. <laughs> I did appreciate the gore effects. Those are fantastic. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, I didn't realize that it was so similar in plot to Deadly Friend, which I actually have not. Oh, yeah. It's it's almost the exact same movie as Deadly Friend. <laughs> but... <laughs> Man, I, 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 I have no idea how that was made, <laughs> but it, <laughs> it's something to see. And if, if you want to see something that you that uh, just just yeah, I, I, I'm kind of speechless about this film. Like I just, you know, it I'm, I'm glad the gore cut is available because I can't imagine watching that without the gore in it. Like, damn, because that's the main that was the best thing about it. So like if that's not in there, like was there any gore in the original no, no, not at all. No, it was a PG-13 kids movie. So what happens at the party or like he rampages through the party? They, they just kind of don't show it. What? Like he kind of, yeah. That's it's like just 20 like, minutes of the movie. <laughs> it's like people screaming off screen and him like running towards people and then they look at the camera ah, and then they're dead. So they do they leave the part in at the end of the movie? Spoiler alert. Where she strip dances for his brain? I don't remember. Uh, I need to look on the Blu-ray because I actually do have the the original version. I'm does sure come with Chris it. has so many questions right now. <laughs> no, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, so, I, so, yeah. Since you since you spoiled the striptease <laughs> for the brain, which is just I question I questioned my sanity watching this movie. It, it is a it is you know an experience and i can see if you that. make me question my sanity while watching a movie you're gonna get a five star rating on letterbox is what i'm fucking saying so that's that's tammy and the t-rex guys uh just you'll be changed after you see this movie you, you will question yeah. a lot of things about yourself did you have any recommendations uh chris before we close things out oh I, I think the only one I came prepared with was The Innocence, which you cannot stream anywhere, but you can probably find it at your local library. <laughs> awesome. Or on a site that rhymes with poo tube. Ooh, <laughs> is it on the YouTubes? It, it could be. It could I'm, be. I'm, I would be surprised. You find it at your local library or at your local Criterion sale. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Well, before we close things out, I do just want to kind of give you a heads up of what to expect next month. I know this episode is, is came out later um obviously and we didn't get our two episodes a month like we usually do but we will make it up to you we have some fun stuff coming up including i don't know if it'll make next month or the very beginning of march but the next episode of our retrospective series is coming out and we are actually rebranding that so it's been called year in horror uh to kind of 
that is kind of a pretty common phrase. Uh, and so to just kind of uh, brand it a bit more to us, that series will henceforth be known as another miserable retrospective. So that we is- didn't want to get sued. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, I don't want to get sued. <laughs> to, to be to be on brand for us, it's going to be it's going to be called Diarrhea Fart. And uh, yes, um, thank you for listening to the Diarrhea Fart cast. <laughs> this is uh, this has been Poopsie. This has been Poopsie Larue, along with my co-hosts Peanut Butter Jones and Dookie Watkins. I leave that in Zach. I said that was, that was a fun tangent. Yeah. So, uh, another missile retrospective will, uh, we're, that is our, uh, our next episode of that will be on 1993. So that is the series where we uh, each pick three, uh, horror movies from a said year. So a total of nine, and we kind of have a friendly kind of competitive, uh, retrospective. Uh, we kind of, let me tell you, whoever picked 1993 is an asshole because that year sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we pit the films kind of against each other in rounds and we kind of vote on the one we most uh, are keen to watch at the moment. It's a fun time and we're excited to continue the series and hopefully from now on they'll uh, release a little more frequently than they have. I know it's kind of been of a big gap, but that will be coming next month. Probably uh, if not the end of this month, February, uh, beginning of March, there are a decent amount of horror movies hitting in February that we'll cover. I'm looking at I'm looking at a list of uh, horror movies coming out in just 2020, and I'm getting excited. Oh, also, uh, I'm definitely going to say it on here that uh, we will be covering Slashback Video in some way, shape, or form, uh, which is an art installation that is a video store replica that the only thing the video store carries are horror movies. So... I have gone every year. I've actually been to Slashback three times, four if you count the convention, um, but they're starting a new Slashback and we are going to be covering it. So don't worry, we have your back. We will post pictures and all that fun stuff. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, guys. That's it for this episode of Another Resort Podcast. So please stay tuned. We got a lot more happening in February. Before we go, though, let me plug our social media accounts. So again, you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mposofficial. Please check out our YouTube page. You can find the link on our Twitter account, or you can just search, search Another Miserable Podcast on YouTube. Please subscribe to us there. Subscribe to us on any podcast uh, service that you use. It really helps us out. You can also follow these two gentlemen on Twitter. Chris, what is your Twitter, sir? It's the most original Twitter handle in the world. It is uh, Chris Pistol, K R I S P I S T U L E. Awesome. It's my name. And it's Professor my, my Casey. Name. <laughs> Professor Casey, what is your Twitter handle? Uh, it's at it's uh, at Lucha Gringo, all one word. I just want to tell you to tell your little baby dork ass friends to listen to our podcast. Thank you. <laughs> And you can follow me on Twitter if you'd like at twitter.com slash earth to McFly. So that's earth, the number two McFly. Don't tweet there too often. I also run the uh, MPOS Twitter page as well. Awesome. So that was, that'll do it for today's episode, guys. Please, please stay tuned. Uh, I promise the next episode will be out soon. We'll probably talk about uh, whatever horror movies are coming out in February. Fantasy Island, uh, Invisible oh, Man no. is the end of February, but there's a bunch of indie Oh, rumors. no. <laughs> <laughs> fantasy island all right oh no hey hey one of my friends wrote fantasy island so i'm more than down to talk about that actually oh, so yeah. awesome all right guys thanks for tuning in have a wonderful day have a fun super bowl sunday though this will be out way after that so i hope your team won. i hope your team won <laughs> i don't even know who's playing the niners and the chiefs all right you just made those up. Those don't exist. <laughs> they do. All right, guys. Take it easy. Later. <laughs>